everyone welcome to my christmas video where the only thing that distinguishes it from my other videos is that i'm dressed up in this festive gear and i have and i have my props from the 100 yen store here so props game on point i've been addicted to these ripstick snacks lately they're basically just like a super salty faux bacony type of snack it's made with shrimp and crab part particles Oh wait, no, it says it has, it does include domestic black pig extract. I don't know what pig extract means, but there you have it. It's probably like 1%. Mostly it's just covered in salt and it's very addictive. I also got some wintry themed uh, gel nails. This is my second time getting gel nails all year. I used to get them like once a month, no joke, when I first came to Tokyo because I was a stupid 23 year old with no sense of money and I don't know who I thought I was. Nowadays, I only I only save the gel nails for special occasions. Now, Japan is really well known for their high quality gel nails. I'm pretty sure that this is where the gel nail trend started. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But I know for a fact that like, it was popular here for a long time before it ever even transferred to the North American market. So Japan definitely has a lot of amazing gel nail salons to select from. Every salon and every nail manicurist is kind of different as far as their technique and style goes. So being someone who has been a long time wearer of gel nails and who has also tested quite a large number of salons in Tokyo, it's very hard for me to find one that hits high marks in all the areas of naildom. <laughs> such as design or the thickness of the gel or, you know, the shininess, the way that they shape your fingernails. I'm really picky about all of that. And a salon that I used to go to all the time in Shinjuku recently closed down. So I found this nail salon near my house. I told them what I wanted and they said, yeah, no, sure, no problem. We um, specialize in custom nails. That's kind of their selling point is that they'll customize it exactly to the way you want. Mostly every salon does this, but some of them give you like an attitude if you want to customize it too much. I'm really big on customization. I just said custom like a hundred times but I'm really big on um, coming up with like my own creative design I feel like I don't get as much enjoyment out of it if I just pick one of their little pre-made design samples so even though I might not create a design from scratch which I have done before but normally that's not the case what I do is I like to take bits and pieces from different you know sources of inspiration so that I can have like the exact nail design that I want so anyway I'm very happy with the job that they did for me I got like this deep red burgundy color for the main color which is my favorite color to wear in winter and then for these two fingernails I'm not flipping you off this is my ring finger for these two nails, I got a knit design, which is actually 3D. If you get it with a matte coat, it's the 3D effect is more visible. They actually take like a sculpting powder material to create the individual knits that you would see in a sweater. And then, this is the star of the show, I had them draw um, Jack Skellington's face on a pearl. So that was the icing on the cake for me, that she was able to do that. The fact that she could um, accommodate my little Nightmare Before Christmas request. And I think I'm definitely going to go back there to get my nails done. Even though I wasn't planning on making this a monthly habit again, but I don't know, I guess we might be living the gel nail life again in 2019. So anyway, today's review is going to be centered on a collection that came out a while ago that probably nobody cares about except for me. And I actually didn't care about it either for like the past however many months it was out. But something just came over me when I saw it in the store and I ended up binge purchasing like 8,000 yen worth, as I tend to do. So I picked up a bunch of items from the Revlon Shoot the Moon collection, which I think is a really weird name for the collection. Like, shouldn't it be Shoot for the Moon or something? But why would you want to shoot the moon? Um, I don't know, it sounds kind of violent to me. I picked up the Revlon Eye Paint in Starlit. And then I have two of the limited edition, um, like, holographic type lipsticks. Revlon Super Lasting Lip Gloss. And last but not least, the Revlon Cheek Draping Palette in number two, Sunset on Mars. I think the first time that I saw this collection, I only focused really on the cheek palette, which I thought was cute but kind of boring because it's just like a moon and a couple of stars. Maybe that's why I passed over the collection initially. But then recently when I saw it again, I noticed that they had like a bunch of other designs as well. I especially like this little UFO drawing on the lipstick 
cartridges anything that has a ufo on it like i'm basically going to buy it so yeah that's what happened i'm going to test out this eye paint first this is in the color starlit so this color is like very silvery with a taupe base underneath I felt like this would be a really good eye base for a lot of my cooler tones shadows so I'm going to actually use this as an eyeshadow base today but when I first swatched it on my hand I noticed that the consistency is definitely a little bit chunky it's not rough by any means like it's very smooth to the touch but you kind of have to be careful when you spread it out because it can tend to clump up and get a little almost crepe-like in texture. You want to make sure that you take your time to sort of pat it out. I think if you just apply sort of a light patting slash dragging motion like I'm doing right now, you should be able to control it pretty well. But there's no way of telling until I actually try applying on my eyes. So let's do that right now. Okay, now I'm going in with my Platinum Street Metals eyeshadow palette by Shiseido. We are going to start off with this icy blue-gray color right here. Kind of matches my outfit today. Then I'm going to darken up the outer half of my eye with this silvery gray taupey color. Do you see there's like a bald spot on my eyelid right here that's just not taking any eyeshadow whatsoever I don't know if that's the fault of the eye paint or if it's my fault for waiting too long because I feel like it dried before I got to pack on the eyeshadows yeah I'm gonna add a little bit more then I'm going to add this beige goldish shade in the inner corner And finally, for the sake of using all of the colors in this palette, because I really do love this color scheme, I'm going to take this warm terracotta brown and drag it along my lower lash line, just on the outer half of my eyes. Now I'm going to add eyeliner and eyelashes off camera and I will be right back. But I want to quickly just mention the eyeliner that I've been using lately. It's called Lia Nani, um, and it's produced by Yusuke Kawakita, who is a hair and makeup artist. This is one of the best black liquid eyeliners I've ever used, and that's a big thing for someone like me who wears liquid black eyeliner every single day of her life to say. First of all, the packaging itself is just so like sleek and weighty which you wouldn't be able to tell, but it has a really nice weight to it. It feels really luxurious. It's made of like this really cool steel or something, so it feels like cold to the touch. It almost reminds me of like a bullet casing, and the eyeshadow formula itself is just stunning. Like that is one of the blackest blacks I've ever seen in my life. And it dries down matte without losing any of the intensity. This is as black as my soul on a good day. Let's move on to the cheek palette. The idea is that you get a main cheek color and then a deeper color here that you can sort of layer over this lighter color or even contour a little bit with and then you get a highlighter color. There was another color variation that was more on the bronzier side but that one didn't look like it was going to do anything for my skin so I went with this one. I like how the deepest plum shade right here is actually a matte formulation and then there's a tiny bit of glitter in the pink shade but not going overboard and then finally this um, really light metallic -y pink shade I'm going to use as a highlighter today so I'm just going to apply that middle pink color like I would do my normal blush oh that is pigmented jeez I might have put a little too much on uh, be more careful than I was if you decide to pick this up the pigment is intense. It's a little difficult to blend out, like the color kind of just latches onto your face wherever you initially place it, so be careful and use a light hand. But that's really pretty though, I think it gives me a nice glow, as if I had just come in from a snowstorm or something. I'm gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of the darker cheek color. Holy crap, look at how much powder 
is picked up on my brush. Revlon be stepping up their game though. Put it like very lightly dust it in the hollows of my cheeks where I would normally put contour color. This is definitely giving me like an 80s blush vibe. And then let's finish off with the highlight. This has a lot of fallout, but you get great color payoff in exchange. So I'm not mad at it. This highlight is showing up pinker on my face than it looks in the pan, I feel like. But it's still light enough to illuminate, I guess. And now let's move to the final moment we've all been waiting for. Oh my god, this packaging does not want to come off. Okay, so we have this metallic lilac blue color called So Starry. Look at that shift. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is applying sheer at first, but you can definitely build up the opacity. And then we have a deeper, like, wine red color called Marooned on Mars. Both of these have, like, intense glitter in them, fitting for the holidays. That's what they look like. Ooh, so sparkly. And then I have the gloss, which does not have the name printed on the bottle, and I threw away the packaging for this already, but I'll put the name up on the screen. This looks like it would just be a really great topper for any number of lipsticks. I think you could even put it over something as dark as Marooned on Mars, just to give you that extra dimension. This is probably one of my favorite um, types of like out there lip colors. I love a lilac with a bluish... Bluish. I love a lilac with a bluish duochrome tint. I just think it gives such a outer spacey vibe. I'm gonna go in with the So Starry lipstick and top it off with the gloss. Cody. I'm kind of feeling like an alien sex goddess right now, and that makes me really happy. I'm trying to decide like whether or not I could get away with this at work. Do you think I should try it? I mean, I know it looks like extra crazy today because I have on my blue contacts. I ran out of my regular ones, so I'm waiting for them to come in and all I have right now are these blue contacts. But when I'm back to my regular contacts and I just do a neutral eye, I don't see why I wouldn't be able to wear this on like casual Friday or something. I'm gonna try Marooned on Mars now. Maybe that one will be more work appropriate. And then we're just going to dab a tiny bit of this on the center of the lips. Oh my god, yes. That looks intense. It looks like in um, comic strips where like the rest of the character's lips are black, but then they draw like a, a white circle to represent where the light would be reflecting. I feel like that's what this looks like. I will say that I'm not crazy about the consistency of this gloss. I think it's like way too sticky. And it also has a pretty strong vanilla scent, which I don't like. I'm not a fan of vanilla, unless it's ice cream. But I don't like it in my perfume or skincare or anything like that. I much prefer fresher scents like rose or citrus or anything fruity. But I will say that the effect is very impressive. The glitter is super reflective. Maybe this combo is more wearable for work than the last one. I would say my favorite items are the cheek palette, if you don't mind a lot of fallout. They're pigmented enough to the point where you can use them as eyeshadows as well. So that's always a bonus when you get more than one use out of an item. So I would say that that's my favorite item from this collection. And then second favorite would have to be what I'm wearing right now, this Marooned on Mars lipstick. Not only is the packaging adorable, I feel like for a glitter formula, it applied really nicely and it feels very comfortable on the lips. It is very gritty because there are just that many glitter particles in it, but it doesn't like... I didn't find it to be too rough on my skin and I like how you can opt for a sheerer wash of color 
or to build it up to a higher intensity. The lilac shades of both the lipstick and lip gloss, for what they are, I was really impressed with them. Obviously, these colors are not really meant for every day. I especially like this gloss because you can use it as a topper against more natural looking lip colors. So you still get to have that sort of alien sex goddess moment, but kind of like under the radar so that you don't get in trouble at work. Yeah, that's about it.